Maybe you've sent VeChain to an Ethereum wallet or you've sent Ethereum to your Theta wallet or any combination of these. Fortunately, it's actually quite straightforward to recover your funds in this situation. In this video, I'm just gonna run through how to do this recovery if you're using a key store file for your uh, Ethereum or clone wallet. Uh, I'll be running through how to do it from a software wallet, like something like Trust Wallet, uh, where you can actually have, you know, Theta, VeChain, and Ethereum all there in the same wallet with uh, compatible addresses. I'll quite happily send to each other. And I'll also just be looking at what you can do if you have a Ledger Nano. This process will be identical for basically any uh, Ethereum clone. And I'm just using uh, VeChain and Theta just because they're the things that people have been asking me for, both uh, sending me emails and in comments on my other videos. And if you haven't already done so, hit subscribe and that way you can stay in the loop for content I make to help you find your way in the crazy and often hostile environment that is cryptocurrency. So before I go any further, one thing I do need to emphasize is that if you have sent uh, one of these altcoins, so say you've sent some VeChain to your Ethereum address, this process will involve importing the private key from that Ethereum address into this other wallet, let's say the VeChain wallet. And what this means is that the uh, wallet that you're importing this Ethereum private key into not only has uh, the information you need to be able to recover, you know, that VeChain back, but it can also have all the information it needs to take all of the Ethereum on that address as well. So you need to be really, really careful uh, if you've got Ethereum on that address already. The simplest way to stay safe in this situation is to make sure that if you've got things like Ethereum on this address that you accidentally sent an altcoin to, that you move all of the Ethereum and any ERC20 tokens off that address onto a new one before you go importing the private keys from that Ethereum account into say your VeChain wallet. And if you're a hardware wallet user, say you've got a ledger or something, uh, in addition to having to move the Ethereum off that address before you go importing it into some other random wallet, uh, this process will also involve you manually handling your seed phrase and entering it into some various software tools. And you know, you can do this securely in like Tails Linux or something like that. But uh, honestly, a more fail safe way to uh, do this process if you're a hardware wallet user is actually to move everything on your hardware wallet to a new seed. Uh, and I've got a video that looks at how to do that safely and securely. Once you've moved everything to a new seed, then you can just simply uh, follow the same process of software wallet users and not be so worried about accidentally, uh, you know, compromising the security of your entire hardware wallet. We'll actually start off with the easiest scenario and that is recovering uh, from sending, say, uh, VET or Theta or you know, any Ethereum clone to a My Ether Wallet key store uh, based wallet that a lot of people still use even though they're insecure um, and there you go so this is that wallet and this one actually just has no ethereum in it at all so what we can do is if we go into theta wallet and just select a key store file uh, these eth clones all use the same key store format so we can actually just open the key store file from my ether wallet uh, punching in the password directly in theta wallet and we can actually see uh, that same address here and we can actually see uh, that address that was created on my ether wallet here which is also valid on the theta chain uh, and we can actually see there is the 15 theta and a bit of t fuel uh, that i put there because the thing you'll need for both theta and vet uh, is to actually send some of their sort of uh, fuel token to be able to send that back onto your wallet. So I can actually just grab the uh, Theta address from Trust Wallet, you know, the proper one, and I can actually just send uh, the Theta from that uh, address here, and we'll just send the whole lot send into the wallet password. Uh, I can send that. It's as simple as that to send the theta back into the right account in Trust Wallet. And there you go. And uh, we'll see that appear in Trust Wallet in just a second. And there it is. So uh, that is very straightforward. Uh, for VET, it's also the same. So if you just download the uh, VeChain Sync Wallet and open it up, uh, you can actually just go up here to the wallets uh, button 
And uh, you can actually see I've already imported the Ledger Nano, which has uh, some of the VET. So what you can do is you can actually just import and you can select a key store file. Um, but you'll notice that this VET wallet wants you to paste some text in there. So what we'll do is we'll just open up the Mu key store and we'll just open that using uh, Notepad. And it'll open up and give you this text. So we're just going to say select all, copy, and we'll just close that and we'll just paste that in to the key store thing and we'll just type in the same password that we used to create our MyEther wallet. And we'll just call this uh, Mu Heath Key Store. You can call it anything. And you can give it any password. Because uh, this, this password that you're giving it here is different to the one that you use to decrypt the uh, Key Store file. So we'll just say import. And there it is. So this is uh, that same Ethereum address that we looked at uh, before in my Ether wallet, finishing with B7EB uh, that I had accidentally sent some VET to. Uh, and I also sent some VTHO there as well because we need that to be able to send anything. So uh, again, this is the same process as before. We can just open up that new imported wallet in VET Sync. We can just say we want to transfer the whole lot to the correct VET wallet. That's the one in uh, Trust Wallet. So we'll just paste it there and we'll just say we want to send the whole lot. Ugh. So we're going to type that in because that's just how that is. And then we'll just say send. We'll spend a bit of VTHO and then we'll just say send. We have to uh, use the password we just entered into uh, this sync client when we imported it. Uh, the one we had to type in twice and then we say sign and that's it so uh, in a sec we'll see that appear in vchain on trust wallet there it is so uh, we've successfully recovered both the theta and the uh, vet that were both sent uh, to a wallet that was basically a, an ethereum key store file that had been created with my ether wallet and again this will work uh, with a lot of these uh, Ethereum clones. You can just stick your uh, Ethereum key store straight into them uh, and often they will work. Uh, with the massive caveat though, that every time you do that, uh, this app, like for example, this uh, VeChain Sync app could steal all the Ethereum that is at that, uh, that is in that key store wallet. So again, be careful and move your ETH off first. So the next thing we'll look at is how to use Ian Coleman's BIP39 tool to recover from a situation where you might have sent uh, VET to say the Ethereum address in your wallet. Uh, and again, this process is identical for if you're using a Ledger Nano. Uh, the key thing to know with this one is that uh, the step with Ian Coleman's BIP39 tool is one that you need to make sure you're doing in a secure environment because if someone gets your seed phrase uh, they can take all of the crypto on your wallet and again there are lots of fake uh, imitation versions of this tool out there it is not enough just to download it onto your desktop uh, you need to be running it totally totally offline uh, better yet in something like tails linux and i've got a video that looks at how to set that up so what we're going to do is we're going to stick our seed phrase in where it says BIP39 mnemonic and uh, if you have a BIP39 passphrase or 25th word you're going to need to put that in this field here but you know Trust Wallet doesn't support that so we're not going to worry about it for this example and the coin we're going to select is Ethereum. There it is. And uh, what we can do is we can actually then see the if we scroll down to the derived addresses we can see the Ethereum address right there ending in 1908 which is the same one that we get if we uh, look at our Ethereum wallet in Trust Wallet. So this is the Ethereum address that we sent the VET to. So what we're going to do is we're going to scroll over and we are going to copy this private key and we will then use that private key. We'll go back into the VeChain Sync app, we'll go into the wallet screen and again we're going to say import. But this time, instead of using a key store, we are going to select a private key. And we're going to paste the private key that we got uh, that corresponds to that Ethereum address straight in. And we'll say next. And what we'll do is we'll call this one uh, Trust Wallet ETH Address. 
Let us use. And we'll say import. And then once we've imported that, we can actually see the uh, Ethereum address. That's the same one uh, that is in Trust Wallet that is now in the VeChain Sync Wallet. So we can actually just go in here and we can transfer the uh, VeChain back to the right address in our wallet, just like any other transaction. And there we go. And we'll send that back. And there we go, that has sent, and we'll be able to see that appearing in the VeChain wallet. There it is. I'll just quickly show you one more thing that you can do with Ian Coleman's BIP39 tool to recover uh, some Ethereum that you might have sent to a VET address. What we did before was just put in our seed, we selected Ethereum, and uh, we just didn't touch anything on this derivation path section. We just left it as the default for Ethereum. But what I'll show you is you can actually select this BIP32 tab. And what we can do is we can actually just stick this same derivation path here into Ian Coleman's tool. So if you select BIP32 tab and then punch in that derivation path, it will actually produce for you uh, the same address there that we can see in Trust Wallet and the same private key there. And so what you can do is you can uh, find the address, then you can take this individual private key, you can copy it, and then you can import only that single private key into my Ether Wallet. Because uh, again, this is a way that you can uh, use my Ether Wallet to access the funds on that address uh, without necessarily compromising all of the other uh, private keys on your hardware wallet or your software wallet, as long as you uh, run Ian Coleman's BIP39 tool in an offline air gapped environment like Tails. So what we'll do is we'll just get the Ethereum from there we'll send it back to the ethereum address in trust wallet and we'll just say send we'll confirm and send and we can see that that has now appeared in trust wallet and so this last thing i'm going to show you is how to use my ether wallet to recover uh, some ethereum that you might have sent to a vet or theta address uh, and again this is something that will work with a mnemonic like in trust wallet or will also work just fine with a hardware wallet like a ledger nano so we're going to enter a mnemonic phrase, we're going to enter it in, and we're going to say continue. And what we're going to do is we are actually going to click on the derivation path icon, and we're going to say we're going to add a custom path. So we're going to add two custom paths, and I'll show you why in a sec. So uh, we can see, firstly, that was the uh, 1908 Ethereum address. That's uh, this one here in um, Trust Wallet, so that's good. What we're going to do is we're going to stick in the derivation path uh, for VET, which is M448180, so we'll just type that in. So we'll say VET M slash 44. The uh, apostrophe matters a lot, so don't just leave it out. Apostrophe slash zero, apostrophe slash zero, and then we're going to add that custom path. And we're also going to add another custom path. We're going to add one for theta while we're at it. So I'll just say theta. And that's here on a great support article on uh, from Trust Wallet. And I'll put that in the description. That's m slash 44 slash 500 slash 0 slash 0. And then we're going to add custom path. So now in my Ether Wallet, when we click on that, we can actually see we've got these two derivation paths here, which weren't there before. So firstly, we'll select VET, and then we're going to see, and there it is. And then when we select VET with that derivation path, you can see that it's actually loaded up. So if we hit receive in uh, VeChain on Trust, uh, Trust Wallet, we can actually see uh, that it's there. This is the same address, and that is our Ethereum right there. So what we're going to do, 
Likewise, if we select the theta derivation path, we are going to see that the address for our theta wallet uh, will appear there as well. This one finishing in uh, 0D55. So we've actually located the Ethereum that is on both of these uh, and we can just send this just like you would any other standard Ethereum transaction. So we can send that back to where it belongs. So we're going to send it there. So that's the trust wallet address. We'll say we want to send the entire balance and then just say send. If we go back into Trust Wallet, we will see that appearing. So all of our funds are now back where they belong. So there you go. And again, this should work with just about any Ethereum clone. So if you get stuck uh, or if you have a clone that isn't covered in this video or doesn't seem to be working quite the same, uh, just let me know. Uh, but again, cannot emphasize enough that you need to be extremely careful when you do this. Thanks for watching, I hope that was helpful. Hit like if you think that other people would find this video useful and hit subscribe if you'd like to be kept in the loop about future content I make that helps people stay safe in the crypto space and to recover if they get into trouble. If you have any questions about this video or a topic that you'd like me to cover, just leave a reply.